Day one pulling in, man, I'm, I'm scared out of my mind. I'm nervous because I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. But with that, though, there's just kind of like a giddy little joy that goes to me. I'm getting to learn how to become an officer. I'm getting to learn how to For me, it's been a dream since I was a little kid. I called my recruiter here back in September, a month before we were supposed to start. I flew down, got fitted for uniforms. I was like the last one to go. And then I went th that same day, found um, a month to month fully furnished apartment, signed my lease, and then drove down with just my clothes a week before we started the academy. To be able to come here and get that FaceTime with the staff here and uh, getting in with the recruits and just showing that I really wanted to be here. I cared about their future and I cared about uh, CMPD and, and getting the best officer out here. About six months ago, I was still in uh, Kuwait. Um, I was deployed. When I got back, um, I was actively looking for work. Um, I had left my previous position before the deployment and part of the train up. I had some acquaintances that were in law enforcement, deputy sheriffs, CMPD officers, and I didn't realize uh, until I got back that um, the police were uh, just generally shorthanded. And uh, it, really, it, it really almost bothered me um, that uh, that was the case. And I felt that, you know, if I can contribute, then I should. I am Recruit Williams. I'm the 196th recruit class at CMPD. I decided to take a severance package from a major pharmaceutical company. And uh, while I was home for that time, thought about life, thought about a lot of what's being said and um, the way the world has changed since I was a youth. I've got a daughter, one who's four and one who's six, two daughters. They're gonna be out in the world one day. I just kinda wanna pay it forward and become part of the force that's protecting them. We are the best police department in the country and we're very proud of it. If I can contribute, then I should. I never really lose it. When I go home, I'm still recruit bonding. You're gonna feel different when you put that uniform on. We're all learning together. We're all starting from square one. You're going through something over 26 weeks that is intense, that is challenging, that is life altering. And the people that you share that with are the most important part of the experience. Welcome to the Charlotte Police Training Academy. Over the next 26 weeks, 81 recruits will be mentally and physically challenged and put to the test to see if they have what it takes to be a sworn officer with CMPD. On the first day, recruits were asked to report to the academy by 7 a.m., though many of them arrived 30 or more minutes before. This is the first time they've all met. Forming lines outside of the academy and waiting for the academy staff to let them inside for their first day as recruits. Day one pulling in, man, I'm, I'm scared out of my mind. I'm nervous because I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. But with that, though, there's just kind of like a giddy little joy that goes to me. I'm getting to learn how to become an officer. I'm getting to learn how to For me, it's been a dream since I was a little kid. So it's, it's one of those things that, like, now I'm here and now I have to take care of business. Um, but yeah, pulling in here, man, and it's, I guess they got you out there in the middle of the night. It's dark. You're coming out there, we're all lining up, and we're all in our suits. We're all looking, I know I look good, I look, we're looking dapper and everything. And then something a little funny, that, you know, that goes on. You come in, well, you're scared and you're nervous, but you look good and you feel great. And then they kind of just take that all away, and now you have to get humble. And then you have to build that right back up, of being an officer and everything. But yeah, driving here, I, I didn't want to make any mistakes. I didn't want to go on the speed limit. And uh, and I'm just scared out of my mind. I'm nervous. All right, so you got a book bag in front of you. Go ahead and take that out of the seat. You should be able to strap it to the back. Back of the seat and sit down. This is my opportunity. 
Um, I've worked hard for it. I've put a lot of sacrifice, a lot of work, a lot of late hours for this opportunity, and I was ready for it. I was a lateral from uh, Mint Hill Police Department. Uh, once I came here, being here at the academy, I started uh, <clears throat> talking to the, the recruit staff here and the recruit training staff and uh, let them know my specialties as far as being a SCAD instructor and physical fitness instructor. Um, and then being fortunate when I went to South Division that they let me come up here because they saw where my passion was with uh, training recruits. And being able to come here and get that face time with the staff here and uh, getting in with the recruits and just showing that I really wanted to be here. I cared about their future and I cared about uh, CMPD and, and getting the best officer out here. Um, and then this last class, 195, and. Uh, being what we call the, the backup officer for Officer Carroll, uh, preparing me for 196. I think everything happens for a reason. And, and I truly believe that, uh, you know, all the stars lined up for me to be here. Um, I like the challenge. I like the fact that uh, we're making history and I like to be a part of it. I look back and, you know, we talk a lot about the military and I've got a lot of uh, leadership classes and training in the military. Um, getting further education or higher education, got a master's degree in, in criminal justice. I think all that prepared me um, for this opportunity. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody get a lot of sleep last night? Yes. yes, sir. Anybody toss and turn and look at the alarm clock every 30 minutes? Yes, sir. Yeah, same here. And here, somebody was here this morning about 5.30 and called me Commander. I was like, man, it's going to be a good class. <laughs> so you don't address me as Commander, you can't address me as, as Officer Game. So man, I'm excited to be here. What a, what a great day to be a part of CMPD, uh, making history. Um, if you look back to the back there, not a him, but those badges, there's, there's 81 badges there. And that is your badge right there. you got a great staff here to get you there. It's going to take your partners to your left and right. You can't do it by yourself. It's a team effort, okay? So while we wait, go ahead and address the person to your left and right. Introduce yourself and tell them, hey, just like you're in church. Communication's big, and you know, I remember that first day I told them to look to their left and right and, and shake their partner's hand, and, and really uh, owning that reality that this person may save my life one day, and that was the message I was trying to get across that first day. You know, honestly, I, I was nervous as well. This was my first class. I wanted to make that first impression and make a good good impression that would, that would last. Um, but I knew they were nervous as well. I could, I could see it in them. Um, wanting everything to be perfect, uh, wanting to be on time, not wanting to be late. Uh, just making that great impression, that first impression, and one that is last. A lot of times, um, stuff in between gets lost, but everybody remembers that first impression. Morning, it's me again. Morning, 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 Morning. All right, we're going to introduce to you uh, the Chief of Police, and all my police department is Chief Johnny Jennings. Chief. Thank you. Wow. Hey, look at you all. Are those all blue suits, or do you already have it? <laughs> <laughs> um, just wanted to come up and take just a few minutes to, one, thank each and every one of you because what we're looking at right now across the country the shortage of police officers i address new academy classes uh, as often as i can uh, that was overwhelming i mean just to go in there and see that many people in that classroom was almost surreal to say this is a this is an academy class these are people that are going to fill much needed vacancies within our agency and uh, I think it's exciting. The entire department and the entire city should be excited about what we're having uh, out here at our police academy. One of the biggest landmarks for each recruit class is getting their uniforms, and recruit class 196 is no different. Half of the class went to visit Gauls on their second day to do just that. This picture right here, see this? She's talking. This right here. 
Alright, this is what I need you to come out of the dressing room looking like in this class A. This shirt, polyester, and these pants, no cargo pocket on the side. Put your boots on, pull the tie out of your bag, bring it out with you, and the hat and the belt if it's in there. If it's not, let us know. We'll get you fitted for one here because they ran out of some sizes when they were filling orders. Okay? But the class A is what I need you to come out in so we can size it up and get it looking right. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Oh, and you need the towel right there? Have you been uh, thinking about it? Thomas, ma'am. Yeah, right here. I'll take Jordan. Okay. All right. Thank you. Styers? Super? Oh, Y'all can go ahead and, and start dressing out. Oh, we got another one. Sweater. Williams? Williams, right here? Williams. And I need Wilson. Oh gosh. Skip this one. Come on down. Oh, okay. Skip this one. Put the iron. It felt important. You know, like it felt kind of like you're putting a hat on. You're transitioning from a civilian to a to a cop, to an officer. And you're holding yourself to a, at least in my, the way I look at it, is you're holding yourself to a higher regard. You know, um, you should always hold yourself high, to high standards, but it's a little different when you're donning on the actual blue suit, right? And you're kind of looking at yourself like, hey, you don't look too bad in this, in this uniform. So it's not, you know, it's one of those things that, it was definitely one of those moments where, I'll, I'll definitely always remember it, but it's one of those moments that I'm like, man, this is real. It's, I, I'll be wearing this come April, you know? I'll be walking around in this come April. Uh, so it's, I, for me, it, it felt like a, kind of like a shoulder moment. Like you're like, oh, looks good, looks nice. Step right over here. That's the wrong side. Stand step right down. there, Miss Angel. will tell you when to step up on the block. How's that fit? Uh, not bad. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Back all right, come on down here. Okay. Go ahead and dress out. Pass me all the pants you have. Come here. Put your hat on. Okay, when you put your hat on, right? Look forward. Look straight ahead. Okay? I want your hat to be level. This way. Two fingers right through your neck. Okay? So not back on your not like ball cap, right? Not like the Maytag nail like you see on TV. Right? Tight. Down this way. Okay? So if it needs to change, right? Because the circumference of your head is different, you need to let her know. Okay. You can look in the mirror if you need to kind of. You got your belt on. We go ahead and do the body armor side. What's your last name? All right, Mr. Muhammad, go ahead and dress out and pass me all your pants. This is where I feel like the um, why that you know we've, they've been all the officers I've been talking about, um, and that we each other have been talking about. That's where it comes in comes into play. Because I'm 100% sure there's going to be days where I come in when I've graduated and I'm out on the beach. There's going to be days that I come in and I'm like, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. But I have to remember why I'm doing this. And I have to remember that I'm not doing this just for myself. But once you take a deep breath, realize your why, you push through anything. It's common for recruits to join CMPD's academy from states all along the East Coast. But when you're being pulled in a different direction, the choice can be tough. I applied for uh, CMPD back in December, and I actually was maybe going to be in 195, and then since I hadn't heard anything yet from Secret Service, because they were kind of overlapping, so I was coming here some weekends doing things, some, some virtual, and then I was going to DC or doing other things for Secret Service, where in that one I would have been a special agent, and made it all the way through to the last process where it just was waiting to be medical cleared and um, my doctor misplaced my paperwork so it never got sent to them. So I, I, for two months I had just been waiting for a response from them and my recruiter here kept texting me and he was like, You're, we really want you here, you're welcome to come and then, if, and then if you hear something back from Secret Service you can always leave the academy and go do that. So my brain was all over the place and finally in September I called somebody from headquarters at Secret Service and I was like, what is happening? Why do I know nothing? And she was like, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no, because of HIPAA, she was like, I have no way of knowing when you're going to be pushed through. So I, if I were you, I would take the other job. So I called my recruiter here back in September, a month before we were supposed to start. I flew down, got fitted for uniforms. I was like the last one to go. And then I went th that same day 
found um, a month to month fully furnished apartment, signed my lease, and then drove down with just my clothes a week before we started the academy. So the academy start was a little crazy for me. When I first met with Officer Ganey for uh, around like week three or so when we were talking about class leadership, he asked me about it because I still in my head was like, I have no idea if I'm leaving. I mean, I enjoyed it here, but it was just, obviously the start of it is just so go, go, go that I was like, I don't even know if I like it because we're just taking tests every day. But I then, right when I sat in his office, I think I came to that realization as I was sitting there. He was like, well, I want you to be class president, but if you're going to leave, obviously that doesn't work. And I think that when he said that, it kind of like sunk in with me of, I like it here, I want to be settled here, and like, I think that everything does happen for a reason, and that's why I, maybe something happened with the doctor, and that's why I didn't hear from them. So that day, I was like, I, I'm even if I don't pull my application from Secret Service, I still know that I'm not going to take it. The theme of week one is team. The recruits heard the message to stay together repeated multiple times, and they'll need to have each other's back as they end the first week with their first physical testing session. The first is always the most challenging. Left. Left. Right, left. One. One. Um, in the beginning, we did squad workouts where that squad leader can uh, actually start working with his team. You never know what situation you're going to get in out here once you start answering calls for service. And that's why I always try to tell people to treat people with respect, um, dignity, and honor, because um, that's going to be your backup. And you don't want somebody coming to back you up that you may uh, 
made angry one day or, or you did something wrong in their eyes. Um, so if you treat everybody the way you want to be treated, um, I think it comes back full circle and you're going to need something from that person. And you never know how big or small it may be. And it could be a life decision. First row, man. First row. On your feet, that means now. Oh, oh. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. If you guys are waiting for tomorrow to get better, you're sadly mistaken. You need to take advantage of it right now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for next week because you should already prepare yourself to live in the moment. And some of you out here are waiting for tomorrow to get better. Wait till next week to get better. That's not acceptable because it's gonna to be too late. Your chance is now, take advantage of it now. Understood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Front lean and rest, push up position. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go, let's go. Take your time there, guys. Take your time, time. any time. Go, go, go. Down, up. Oh, sir. Down, up. Two, sir. Down, up. Three, sir. Down, up. Four, sir. This is going to be the worst workout ever. Like you prepared to be your whole body be in pain. So I was like, God, what would they possibly do? But I had also been, my recruiter had been sending me workouts over the summer that we would maybe be doing here. It was basically like the Cooper fitness test or like the Pope hat or something like that. And then I think it also helped that I had to be, I had to keep doing fitness tests for secret service too. And I just in general like working out. So I, by the time Friday happened, we, they were like, okay, go back and shower. And in my head, I thought we had like 40 more minutes. I was like, oh, that was it. So it obviously like, it was hard. Like it's not necessarily fun by any means to have them be like burpee, 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 run again. Or like, but I think that if you prepared, I think a lot of people saw PT and just assumes that, oh, I can run a lap, I can do 10 push ups or whatever. But I mean, I think a lot of it, it was less physical. Like, you could do it. It's just, it was more mental of people being like, oh, this is so hard, and then scaring themselves. Hey, great workout. Man, I, like I told you guys a couple days ago, I hope, I hope something triggered. I hope something triggered when you put that uniform on. When we talked about the officers being killed in line of duty. You know, I think about the officers that knew six months ago that I'm going to try to be a police officer. We definitely saw today the ones that took that concept, took the trigger, they took it personal, they had some pride, and they started working out. Because they cared about me, they cared about them, and they cared about you guys. You know, I wanted to see uh, maybe the, the recruit that just had those struggles, and uh, maybe that recruit that didn't think that they were going to make it. Uh, and being that um, impactful leader uh, to show them and give them the, the uh, skills that they need uh, to graduate. So seeing that, that recruit from day one, and six months later, just seeing that transition is what I'm most excited about. The classroom is your 840. Yes, sir. All out. The cadets have made it through week one of the academy, and now they're headed on to week two, where they'll dig into the academic portion of the academy. They will start with one of the most important, 
and toughest blocks. Legal is very difficult. They are learning a massive amount of information in a matter of weeks, but it's absolutely necessary for them to be able to do their job safely because we want to make sure they and the community are safe through their enforcement actions. Everybody's in shock, right? We're, we're standing there, we're tired, we're, we just got all this stuff. All right, we're meeting people, that guy's weird, this guy's whatever, I don't know what I'm doing. They do a fantastic job of breaking it down for what needs to happen, why it needs to happen, and why it's important every step of the way. The things we teach them in legal are the foundation for all of the tactical things that they will go on to use later. And so we tell them the tactical things you're gonna learn at the academy are exciting, you get to do a lot more, but you can't do anything without the legal. Our legal lessons dictate all of the steps our officers would take from serving arrest warrants and search warrants to pulling people over on traffic stops. All of the simple things that I don't think people realize have legal justifications do need to be taught and instructed so our officers know what to do and how to do it when they encounter citizens. You can be the greatest shooter in the world, the greatest fighter and all that other stuff, but none of that means anything if you don't understand how to apply it on the street. It provides the foundation of everything we do after. We have to make sure with a group that big that we are trying to give as much individual attention as we can so that they understand the topic. There are a lot more questions. There are a lot more why this, why that, and hypotheticals. And we're okay with that. We laugh through them because it helps them learn to be able to talk through the legal lessons. It's just a lot more talking and conversation, which at the end of the day, helps them learn because dealing with citizens is a conversation to get through the investigation and to get through the legal steps necessary to police. The biggest part of that instruction block is teaching them the actual justification needed to interact with a citizen. Sometimes our officers can go up to any citizen anywhere in Charlotte and just have a conversation. Other times we need to meet certain legal standards before we can detain someone. And I think because that's the foundation for every encounter we have with somebody, they need to know how do I detain an individual? What legal standard do I need to meet probable cause, to arrest someone? I think that's the most important to that from the beginning, they start off right and finish a case right through the end. Subject control arrest technique. The concept of putting your hands on somebody, you have to understand when and why that is possible. And more, more importantly, what you're doing and, and what is supporting your ability to do that and why it is not okay for the average person to do that. So without that, that, that base layer, it is impossible to do this job. It would literally be the Wild West in every, in every sense of the term. They did a fantastic job of laying that out. Right, please. Now that the cadets' minds have been stimulated, it's time for their bodies to continue to be sharpened. All right, first two squads, take it deep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, good morning. Yes, sir. All right, your exercise. It's gonna be broken up into squads. Don't give me 25 push-ups. Once you get down to your push-ups, to go out the gate in the one 400 meter lap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come back. Do the 25 sit-ups. Get down those butterfly sit-ups. 400 meters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come back. Do the 25 air squats. Get yes, down with those. 400 meters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come back. Give me 25 lunges. I don't think you've seen those yet. Just like this. That's one. <coughs> Left, right. That's one. Yes, sir. 25 per knee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get down that 40 meters. No! Oh! Up! Oh! PT, sir. The recruits have a hard PT session, but it's to strengthen them physically and mentally. It also helps to strengthen the team camaraderie, pushing each other past the pain to succeed as a unit. Class 196 heads back to the classroom to learn the proper way to write a police report. Here, Lieutenant Green is showing them what goes into a public narrative. First thing we're going to start with, though, is what the state calls um, ethical dilemmas. So we've got a few of these to go over through the class, so we're going to do one this morning. So listen as I read the question, and then a few of you uh, volunteer to give me a few answers. After an arrest, you are approached by another officer and asked to change your version of the report slightly to look more favorably upon the other officer. What will you do? Yes, sir. Uh, I would um, notify a supervisor 
I would not change the report at all. All right, Mr. Hebeck. Yeah, I wouldn't change the report because it compromises the integrity of the report. Good answer. One more good answer. One more. Yes, ma'am. I would tell him that I wasn't going to do that. So these, I know these sound a little bit elementary and simple, but obviously we're putting things in a lesson plan because why? It's happened somewhere, right? And it's probably happened multiple times. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're doing these reports. Like we talked about so much yesterday is there are a ton of eyes that see these things. And so the last thing you want to do is have your integrity questioned because you went in and changed something, even if it's your friend, even though that you know your friend's not telling you what actually occurred, you know, make sure that you're doing what you know is right. So, like I said, we're going to start first this morning with what's called the public narrative. So the public narrative is going to be short, sweet, and to the point. You're not going to put anybody's name. Um, you're not going to put um, too much detail in there. Because basically in KB Cops, if it's printed out for the public or even like the news media, all they get copies of is your actual public narrative. So you don't want to put Mr. Barry's name in there. Mr. Barry was the victim of a crime to where it's released out to everybody else. If we were writing a public narrative, the victim stated that she was assaulted by a male subject. Um, you know, and you can put in there if there were signs of injury or no signs of injury. We're talking about the who, the what, which we just talked about with elements of the crime, the when, so the date and time it occurred, and where. So we're putting that address block range of where the victim or the reporting person is saying that it is. We have some educationally minded folks that are really, really good at making study plans and really working with others that have that background or maybe some sort of college education. They were able to kind of step front and center and be like, look, I know we don't know each other, but I got this. Does anybody want this? Because it is a lot. Group class 196, good morning, sir. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Officer Ganey is taking the team out for class inspections. After marching in formation, he shows the cadets how to keep their uniforms in pristine condition. We're almost uh, finishing week two, and uh, what I've seen is uh, individuals starting to take lead. If it's something as small as a, a cleaning detail, seeing that officer take charge and put that group together, really starting to see it shine in PT formations, going out in the morning, seeing that individual rallying you know, the, the officers together, the recruits together, really motivating and pushing them to do just one more push-up is, is what we're what we're starting to see now. Oh! It's a well-rounded recruit that we're looking for. You have to be academically strong, uh, you have to be physically strong, and you have to have those qualities we're looking for as far as uh, what we're looking for, a leader, integrity, uh, personal courage, and just stepping up, taking that initiative, integrity, uh, doing what's right when nobody's around. Have you, uh, you know what a mock back is? Teamwork. You know, it gets better each day, and I just think about where we were just seven days ago and where we're at now, so I can just only imagine the team building and the team effort six months from now. Some recruits research officers that paid the ultimate price in the line of duty. It helps to put into perspective why the unit is more important than the individual. So I'm doing the officer down today, uh, so I'm still a lot of breath, so I'm so trying to regain it. But uh, yeah, this case uh, kind of stuck by my heart a little bit as I, as I was reading through it. Uh, the facts are as follows. Officer John Robert Estridge and his partner were assigned to a uh, Dixie Theater on East Trade Street. With the officer that was down, this is, it's very relatable. He didn't do anything wrong. He did everything correctly. And it's kind of like how you can relate it to our, us as an academy. There's sometimes you don't do anything wrong. You, you do everything perfectly right, but you are still getting punished because your, your partner, your friend, your teammate, they did something incorrect. So as far as the officer down goes, I really wanted to express that, uh, that sentiment that it left me. After reading it, I took some really good time to th think about it and put myself in that officer's shoes. We are out here, not because this is just another job. This is just something that we, uh, I just wanted to go do that, but because of the sacrifices that these officers have done. We should be out here for a much bigger reason than ourselves. Um, so for communicating th threats, it's- The amount of tests that we take within the first couple of weeks, it's test after test after test. These uh, exams, I would say, or would rival or a little harder than quite a few of the college exams that I've taken. The biggest thing that I would say, and especially for new classes coming in, take advantage of the six months that you are given before you are hired. You need to take a big advantage of that. 
If you come in thinking this is gonna be a breeze, this is gonna be easy, I've done this before, you have not done this. CMPD holds himself to a much higher standard than I think a lot of other, well, than I know that a lot of uh, law enforcement agencies do. So if you are not prepared, it shows, and you will be the one that causes your team to either fall behind, you will be the one that causes your team to do extra push-ups, extra sit-ups, extra sprints, because you didn't wanna take the advantage, you didn't wanna take the time to be a little selfless and work on yourself in those six months. Super. I was a little surprised by gaining the leadership role. I've been a leader for our team leaders and, and trainers for other stuff, but this to me feels like it's more important. I have to be a representation of what the, our rules and regs are. I have to be a representation of what the standard is. And so it puts a little bit of, um, I would say a little bit of a good pressure on me to be that person that they can come to or be that person that they can look at and go, well, he's got his stuff in order, he's got his stuff uh, ready to go, he's always paying attention in class. And so when I look at myself and look at the conduct you know, that I do, I have to make sure that it lines up and that I'm an example. Join us next week as the recruits learn more about their newly issued equipment and more of the day-to-day -day of the job.